Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to a brand new edition of Ariel Hawani Meets. And look who we have this time around. The brand spanking new <laughs> WWE SmackDown <laughs> Women's Champion. The one who just cashed in her Money in the Bank briefcase a few weeks ago, moments after winning it, beat Ronda Rousey. And on Saturday, right here in Nashville, Tennessee at Nissan Stadium, she's going to be defending said title against the aforementioned Ronda Rousey. It's Other the one thing. and only. Yes. Other thing. Yes. Liv Morgan, hello. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. It's so good to see you. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am doing great. This is so great. You know, we have been talking for several months about doing one of these sit-down Ariel Hawani meets, kind of like, you know. Iconic. Thing. Yeah. Uh, but we wanted to wait for a big moment for you. Mm -hmm. We wanted to have you because you're such a great personality. You're so beloved, especially in the UK. This feels like a good moment, right? Yeah, you're a champ now. I don't know a better moment. It was the best moment of my whole entire life by far. This has been a big month for you, right? I know. It's... It really has. Um, it's kind of hard to keep up. Like, I'm trying to soak it all in as best as I can just because I feel like if I don't make an effort to just, like, I appreciate this so much, but if I don't take the extra effort to kind of really um, be present, then it, this is all just going to pass me by, you know? So I'm just really trying to just soak it in. I don't know. It's been crazy. It's been a crazy month. It's been so crazy. Sometimes when people have these life-changing, career-changing moments, they're just going, going, going. But I feel like with you, over this past month, you have really tried to appreciate the moment. Yeah. You're sleeping with it. You're looking at it. It's every, <laughs> right? So I how am. do you balance like not resting on your laurels and being like, oh, my God, oh, my God, and also wanting to continue and, and evolve and be better and not just make this a pit stop, make this like a long title reign, a long moment in your career. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is just the beginning. And so um, I definitely want to feel this moment as best as I can. I feel like growing up, you know, and for 24 years wanting one thing and being so la laser focused on one thing and then to finally have it, it's kind of just like, um, like, what do I do now that I've accomplished this so I'm definitely smelling the flowers um, and I'm hoping this is just the start of you know the next chapter of my career in WWE. Uh, when you were dreaming up about this for the past 24 years as a little kid since you were five years old all that stuff uh, like the reality better than the dream <sighs> like how could you compare? Um, the reality is, is like m my reality is so much better than my dreams right now but at the same time it's kind of like overcasted by like this weird euphoric feeling that hasn't left my body like it doesn't feel like I'm living in my reality it's a weird conundrum um like an out-of-body experience no just nothing feels real just like nothing feels real and I'm, that's why I, th I think I'm trying so hard to try to soak it all in and absorb it because like nothing is kind of sinking in like nothing's kind of feeling real and I don't know if that's like a good or bad thing a month later you still feel <laughs> yeah, that way really. yeah yeah it still feels like you're on a high mm -hmm. like you, you I, I spoke to you backstage moments after you won and you were definitely on a high yeah but this person it feels like this is the next day like I could still feel that you're <laughs> glowing over this and it's a month later everyone tells me that I'm glowing <laughs> yes I love that for me um no I feel I just I'm just so proud of it you know like this truly like not to say that I love this more than other past champions, you know, maybe I do, but like this is not like an accessory to me. This is a prize, you know, and so I don't know. I don't know how to not wake up and just be so excited and so happy that I have this. Do you still sleep with it? Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah, I ride with it in my car. If I'm going to the grocery store, passenger seat, babe, seatbelt, wow. let's go. What has been the best part of the past month for you? Kind of finally feeling like enough and I hate that like you know I needed this to like validate me but I just feel like so whole right now um what else though has been really cool this month I feel like is the response overall of like um whether it be like fans or my family my friends and just like my peers um that's been kind of something that I didn't I guess think about um how that would affect me like I've had girls from work kind of come up to me and be like, you winning the championship gives me hope. And I'd never thought of that before. You know, someone that is not a four horse woman or, you know, um, generational, just like this girl that, you know, maybe people thought would never become anything that that gave the other girls like inspiration. I thought that was, that's been really cool too. Why do you think you have this incredible connection with people? 
<laughs> I don't know. It's amazing the way know. they root for you, even when there's not a lot to root for, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. They've just had know. your back. I guess, like, I don't know, energy, vibes, I guess I just, I mean, no harm, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Harmless, and I just want to be, like, the best WWE superstar that I could possibly be, you know? And I want everyone to do great, so maybe they're just happy for me. Uh, I actually just uh, rewatched the Live Forever documentary, Ew. which, why do you have that response? I don't know. I can't watch it. I watch it once and I could like never watch it again. Why is that? It makes me cringe. Why? I don't know. You know what's fascinating? It's very it? vulnerable. It is very, it's a great watch. Um, but if you watch it when it came out like two or so years ago, mm -hmm. it's very incomplete. If you watch it today, it's so incomplete. knowing how the story, I don't want to say ends because you got a lot more, but knowing how you know, everything you end up kind of turned out to be. Then it's a great story. Mm -hmm. But back then, it's kind of depressing at times. It's depressing and I think like kind of confusing. Like, why did we show a 45 minute documentary of Liv kind of just floating right. around? Not you being know? used, not, not being knowing used when you're going to. Not knowing why, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like, it's like one thing. I'm totally cool with like Twitter, Instagram, like anything pertaining to me of letting people in. Like, I'm so okay with it and I don't cringe, but. Watching back the documentary, I just can't do it. It just makes me cringe. It's like too vulnerable. Who, who was that person? Because it did seem like you were a little bit lost, right? You didn't know how they were going to use you, what you would look like. You break up with your, your team. You're getting moved to uh, SmackDown. They're on, like, could you even describe? Yeah, I mean, I knew nothing. I just knew that I wanted to be great. Um, and so I just kept showing up. I went to every single TV throughout that whole entire process. I didn't miss one week of television, even though I wasn't on. Just confused, but hopeful. You know, just confused, but hopeful. I, I was unsure of my standing. I just believed in my heart at the end of the day that something good is going to come from this, wherever it may be, however far down the road, that my career is not, this is just, this isn't what my career is supposed to be forever. Like, I'm going to have that great moment that gets me off to the other side. So if I would have told you back then, in two or so years, you'd be champion, you would have believed me, honestly? I would have hoped it was sooner. Oh, I would really? have been like, oh my gosh, two years. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think I've always known, even if at times it felt like unattainable, that this would be my end game. One thing that you said in the documentary that really stood out to me was, you want to make your family proud of you. And you just mentioned your family mm -hmm. about like one of the best parts of this past month. And so I'm wondering if you have felt that from them. Do you feel like they are proud of you? Do you feel like they are happy for your success? Yes. Um, they're so proud of me, so happy for me. Um, but it kind of, I have like a responsibility in my life. And, you know, it's something that I grew up knowing and why I wanted to be in the WWE so bad and why I pushed so hard for the stream. Like, you know, I have a responsibility to take care of my family. I don't have kids but I have a mother and brothers and sisters that like literally depend on me. So like I know they're so proud of me and so happy for me, but I'm also like, I gotta keep it going. You know, I gotta keep it going. I can't stop here. Like I, even though I'm champ, like I still need this just as much as ever. So um, they're proud and happy, but I like am not letting off the gas, not even for a second. And, and your family dynamic is fascinating. Six of you, right? Mm -hmm. Six kids and your mom raised all of you. Mm -hmm. um, are you, close with your siblings right now the the, the five um, others i mean some not all of them okay. um some i haven't spoken to in years but um most of my family is, lives in florida now so um a lot of them i say like out of six i'm really close with three okay um and i have a good relationship with my mother but um yeah you know i kind of just take um i take care of them so why is it on you to take care of them? It's not. It's not. But I guess growing up and um, being in my environment, like I understood really soon, like this isn't what I want in my life. And so I think that's why, like. What do you mean by this isn't what you want? Like you don't want to live my here? My surroundings. You know, it was just very violent and um, chaotic, not a, like a conducive environment to grow. You know, and so I kind of knew, like, I'm going to save my family. Like, I'm going to save my family. And so that's kind of how I based my whole entire life was, like, what can I do to get us out of this situation? 
And so when I saw WWE for the first time, I was like, <gasps> I fell in love and I was like, this is it. But you saw WWE when you were five. Mm -hmm. Five-year-olds don't usually think I have to save my family. I know. You're thinking that at five? You remember this. That's not a natural thing. I know. <laughs> and did you tell that to someone? Like, um, did you ever verbalize this or did you always keep it as an internal goal? Internal goal. Really? Internal goal, yeah. That's a lot of pressure to put on a young For kid. For sure. Self-pressure, you know, like on your shoulder. No one told you that you needed to save them, right? No, but I always knew that it was going to be me for some reason. I feel like I don't mean to sound like rude. Like I'm, I feel like I'm like carrying myself and I'm like, I'm not like some hero, you know? But I just like always knew like that that's what I was going to do. Like that was like my purpose in a way. It's like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save my family and I'm going to break this cycle of, you know, like, drugs, abuse, you know, police at my house almost every single night. And I was like, this is not going to be my life. And I'm going to also change their life. And so, yeah. Do you mind if I ask why was police at your house every single night? Um, my father uh, had a heart attack before I was born. He passed away at the dinner table. And so in front of all my brothers and sisters, you know, so I mean, I wasn't born, but I could imagine how, you know, seeing your father die in front of you could affect you so my brothers kind of grew up very angry and mad and depressed and sad and um, would act out in various ways so like the police knew my family <laughs> very well okay uh, what, what if anything do you know about your father like did, were, were you I know he was a huge wrestling fan which really? I think is very funny because wow. I didn't know that um, but my mom says he was a huge wrestling fan and so when WWE was on well, sorry when WWE was on everyone would have to like sit on the couch and no one could talk like just sit down and watch the show. And I didn't know that until a couple years ago. So I thought that was very funny because I didn't know he liked WWE at all and he was obsessed. So I thought that was very funny. When you have these moments, do you think about like what he would have said or how he would have reacted? No, it's like so far removed that um, I, I don't think about what he would have thought. I just never knew him, you know? Right. And and when you have this goal that you're going to help your family, that you're going to be the one, is that what almost leads you to not quit? To, like, you can't quit, right? Oh, there's like, I cannot quit. There's no way. There's, there's no way. I have too much, too much work to do, you know? But also for myself, like, I'm a very goal-oriented goal person. I have a lot of, you know, um, high hopes for myself. I have, like, this vision of myself in my mind of, like, how my life, my ideal life would play out, you know? So... Aside from me, you know, wanting to take care of them, I just have my own goals that, you know, I want to um, accomplish as well. Uh, one thing that I really admire about you is how spiritual you are. Ah. Uh, the candles, the crystals, I see like the evil eye stuff yeah. over there and all that, your bracelets as mm -hmm. well. Where did that come from? I kind of just found it. I kind of just found it. I feel like this was like 2019 and... Um, Growing up, not really like knowing what to believe in or not really having kind of a strong faith in anything. And um, I don't remember like what sent me down the rabbit hole. I think I had like looked into like a gemstone, a crystal gemstone, and I wanted to find out like, what is this? What does it mean? And I found out like, you know, every kind of crystal has different energy that, you know, can accommodate different things that you are, you know, looking for. And so I bought a crystal. And I like did a bunch of research on like how can I you know use this, and so I did exactly what I read, and I had a very very weird moment. I had a very very weird moment that I want to explain, but it sounds stupid. Explain. Um, <laughs> it sounds really stupid. Okay, so I. I'm trying to remember what phase I was in my career. I think this was while I was gone. I think this was like live forever. I'm not on TV and I just really needed some guidance. I just needed some guidance because I didn't know what to do. So I find this crystal, I buy it, I do the research. This is going to help me, you know, figure out what I need to do to, you know, fix my career. And so I meditate, I'm in the shower. So as I'm sitting with the crystal, figuring out like, how can I use this to my advantage because I have all these thoughts that I don't know the answers to any of these questions in my head. So I sit on it, right? I go to sleep, I wake up, I go in the shower. As I'm in the shower, kind of re-asking myself all the questions that I was stuck on the night before, um, I swear like all the answers just came to me just like that to where like I feel like this is the best way that I could explain it. I feel like I had a seed at the top of my skull that cracked open and it like rained all over my brain. Wow. And then I had this crazy body high and I was shaking and then I started crying but I was so happy 
but that just that sensation like made me cry and in that moment I like swear I was so clear minded I knew everything that I needed to do wow. and all the answers to my questions like came to me I almost felt like I took like you know like the movie Limitless like the Limitless pill that's how I felt like and I just was just standing in the shower crying tears of joy as I'm shaking and having this insane body high and my brain feels like it's being rained on you know it was the most insane feeling of my entire life and then I actually it scared me it scared me so I like stood I stayed away for a little bit because I was like whoa I don't know if this is good or bad I don't know if I did this right or wrong and then um the answers came to me so then I just kept I just kept doing it and then I just you know went further and further down the rabbit hole and now I'm like stuck to the floor I'll never get up but yeah, that's how that kind of started. And this past month, I, I feel like has been insane for you. You're all over the place. There's uh, responsibilities that come with being champion, mm -hmm. right? Do you still have the time to do all of that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I wrestled with my crystals in my bra when I won the title. No way. <laughs> yeah, money in the bank. Wow. I was like, do do. Do you usually yeah. do that? Yeah. Every time? Mm -hmm. Wow. Doesn't yeah. that like feel uncomfortable? Or well, you crazy? have smooth crystals, oh, you okay, have rough sorry, crystals, right. there's tumbled, not tumbled, right. you know, Got so it. I'll use like a nice little smooth crystal. <laughs> Is there a specific one to use for that night? Um, what did I use that night? I used um, citron because it's my favorite stone. It's like very good for confidence, good luck, prosperity. Um, so I used that. Then I had an amethyst, which is um, my first stone that I ever used um, just to kind of like relax me, calm me. Um, so I had both those, yeah. I've had nights where they've actually fallen out oh, during no. my match and the rest like doot doot. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Anyone like, anyone notice or like do you Me and my opponent and like okay. the ref. No one really in the back or the fans, maybe the fans, but no one said anything about it. But I've had like four times where a crystal has fallen out of my top. <laughs> How many times have you watched Money in the oh, Bank? A million. Really? A million. I'm not even What are you lying. watching more? Getting the briefcase or winning the belt? Getting the briefcase and winning the belt. Um, which one do I watch more? Or you just watch the whole I watch thing? them both. Okay. I, d I don't watch one without the other. Okay. So <laughs> if I'm watching me cash in, I'll watch, you know, me um, win money in the bank and vice versa. I watch them a lot. <laughs> like how many times do you think you've seen it? Realistically, like a hundred. Wow. I watch it a lot. Yeah, the first night after I won, I just laid in my bed. I thought I was going to go out and celebrate. Like I was like, I'm going to go celebrate on the strip. Woo, you know, I'm champ. Um, and as soon as I got there, I just wanted to lay down. So I just like laid down and had the title draped over my chest and I'm just like looking at my ceiling, just like, holy shit. I, and I just kept watching the videos. I just wanted to like remember as much as I could about that moment. And so, yeah, that's what I did the whole entire night. I feel like sometimes, if I could be honest, sometimes I feel like a competitor, an athlete, puts over the title and sometimes the title puts them over, right? Totally. And I feel like right now you are putting over the title. You are making the title feel important, right? It's not just Thank a you. thing. And so I don't think anyone wants to see you lose the belt anytime soon, but things happen, right? Mm -hmm. No one wants this to be a flash in the pan. I think a lot of your fans want to see you have a reign like Becky or Bianca, etc. Are you cogs? I can't let this happen. I don't want to be a flash in the pan. I don't want this to be a month story that people look back on. Oh, remember when Liv won the belt and the money in the bank? Or do you think about that sort of, do you worry about that sort of thing? I haven't worried about it just because um, whether I keep this forever or if I lose it at SummerSlam, um, I don't think that like halts my career or my momentum in any way. I think this was just like, um, the tip of the iceberg, like the very beginning. Um, I'm not worried about losing this and losing like any status, if that makes sense. I don't know why, I'm just like not, wor I'm just not insecure about it. I feel like, um, I don't know, it's just, I just go back to work, right? Like I just keep working and trying harder and then win it back, hopefully, I don't know. Do you agree with that sentiment that you have made the title feel important uh, no knock on Rhonda, but it just feels like, all right, she wins, and it's like another thing, another notch on the belt. You have yeah. made this feel I like... I mean, I don't know that Rhonda even took the, the belt out of her suitcase when, you know, she got home. I don't know, you know? Um, I definitely feel like I love it more. I think it, like, means more, and it's not a knock to her. She's so incredible, you know? I was working at Hooters, serving wings, watching her on UFC nights you know, knocking people out in seconds, and now I'm defending my championship against her, but that's besides the point. But um, yeah, you know, I didn't grow up wanting to be a mixed martial artist or a UFC champion or an Olympic athlete. I grew up wanting to be a W superstar and women's champion. So I definitely think it, it means more to me, you know? Um, and so maybe that's why it seems like I've 
you know, put over the title or I've made right. the title. Elevated it. Elevated it, yeah. That visual of you serving wings while she's on TV, you know, knocking it's people insane. out. That's it's nuts. Insane. Um, yeah, I never, you know, didn't, I thought I'd always be in WWE. I didn't know that, you know, I'd have this kind of weird full circle moment only in my mind with Ronda Rousey, you right. know, that she doesn't even, you know, know about. But, um, yeah, no, it was, it was insane. And it's still like, and I think that's why I just like, nothing feels real. I feel like I'm like living in a simulation right now. I'm just like, how did, how did this all come to be? It's just very trippy to me. Were you a fan of hers? Yeah. Yeah, I loved her. I, I still, I think she's incredible. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about her. But um, if you're going to make me choose, like, I'm going to pick this 100 million times every single time, no matter what you put it against, you know? So I, I have so much respect for her, and I think she's incredible. But I'm, like, willing to do whatever it's going to take to keep this. Why do you think it's taken so long for you to get this? I don't know. I like to believe that everything happens for a reason. So I feel like even though at Money the Bank last year, like, you know, I thought it was my time. I thought I was going to win the contract. Um, even though I thought in my mind I should have been champion like years ago, I'm so happy that I wasn't because I just don't think that I was ready, even though I felt ready because how I feel right now is like so 100 times enhanced to how I felt every single other moment I thought that I was ready. So I just feel like it was the universe kind of like, it's just not your time. It's just not your time. And even though you feel like it is, it's not. And then when it is your time, you know, you'll, you'll feel it. And I feel it every single day all over my body. I'm happy you mentioned last year's Money in the Bank. Uh, I mentioned this to you as well, but I'm sitting there watching the pre-show, which I never watch. No disrespect to the pre-show, but it's just a lot though. You know, it's like four hours, an extra hour. Anyway, I'm watching with my kids and you pop on and you do this like, talk back with them, mm -hmm. right? And I'm watching this, and I'm watching with my sons, and you start crying like almost from the jump. This is the pre-show, and you're so emotional. I can almost cry now thinking about it, yeah. And I was blown away by that interview. I've looked for it on YouTube and whatnot. It's not really, you have to like really search for it. It's one of the best, like when I watched that, I was like, oh, I would put all the money in the world, like you are winning tonight. I felt like the emotions of you about to win were coming out and you were kind of giving us a peek through the curtain. Why were you so, because you didn't end up winning obviously, but why were you so emotional? <laughs> I've never seen so, and it felt very real to me. You know, I just it, wanted to win so bad. It just, I can't like, I know I say it all the time, but like I can't put into words like what, WWE means to me and like how it's changed my life and how it's changed my family's life and like just what it's done for me as like a human being um, I just wanted it so bad. I just wanted to win so bad that it literally brought me to tears like I Just love it more than anything in my whole entire life. I wish I loved anything as much as I love WWE and what I do um, but I don't <laughs> And when it didn't happen, we went back to the hotel that night when reality set in that this is not happening, that another year is going to... What was that like? Um, I was disappointed. I was definitely disappointed, but I was just like, um, let's go back to work, you know? There's like, you don't really have much to do. Didn't you know? lick like, your wounds, didn't feel sorry for yourself? No, I definitely didn't feel sorry for myself. I thought like, I definitely thought this was my year though. Like I thought last year there was no way I wasn't winning it, you know? So I was like... If I didn't win this year, I'm never going to win this kind of. But um, it motivated me, and I was like, all right, you know, I'll just get back to work. And so that's what I did. Considering you love this so much, you love this business, you love this company so much, I'm wondering, a couple years ago, you know, two members of the Riot Squad no longer in the company when people were leaving and whatnot, were you ever worried about your future in the company? Yeah, yeah. Um, when Sarah got fired, we, we were genuinely shocked. We were shocked that we didn't even know what to say or what to, or what to say to her, you know, because when I met Ruby and Sarah, they had been best friends for like 10 years, right? I, they weren't necessarily like part of my crew at the Performance Center. You know, we all had a respect for each other because we worked together, but they just weren't like my people that I hung out with. And so when I got called up and got told I'm being put with Ruby and Sarah and in a tag team, I was like, wait, 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 wait. Like, I thought I was a singles competitor, wrestler, didn't want to be in a tag team, and I especially didn't really want to be in a tag team with them. Um, <laughs> you didn't like them? <laughs> I like them, but I just think that, that uh, that's not how I saw myself. Got it. I thought I was like a single superstar, you know? And so I'm um, being put in a tag team, a heel tag team with these girls that have this great relationship, and I'm going to like third wheel it the whole entire time, you know? But we 
became tag teams and we just like clicked right away and we all had so much more in common than we ever thought. We couldn't look more different like aesthetically, but we all have so much on the inside that is so similar. And so we just related to each other right away and kind of just like fell in love and became sisters. And um, we developed such an insane bond. So when Sarah got fired, we were like shell shocked. We did not know what to say or why or how to handle it. Um, and then when Ruby got fired, I mean, it's a different scenario for me now because um, it's not the three of us, it's just me and Ruby, it's just been me and Ruby, me and Ruby think we're gonna win the tag team titles, you know what I mean? And then um, I get like chills thinking about it. She calls me and she's like, I just got fired and I live on a farm and I don't get cell service. So and in that moment, I was like, oh, me too. Like if they fired Ruby, they fired, they've fired me. And so I'm kind of just sitting there like waiting to get the phone call or the text. And then I'm like, I'm on the farm. I'm not going to get the phone call because I don't get cell service. So I'm just sitting there like thinking like I'm fired too. And then I have Ruby, you know what I mean? So we're both just shocked. We don't know what to say. It's just very, 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 very surreal. And then um, I'm like, do I call work and like ask if I'm fired? I just didn't see why they would let her go and not me. I didn't understand it. Um, so the whole time I'm thinking I'm fired too, and I'm kind of just like settling and like, okay, um, you know, maybe we, <laughs> we could still be a team, right? I don't know. Um, and then I wasn't fired, and it, I'm so grateful that I wasn't, but in that moment it was almost worse that I wasn't also fired. Why? Um, just because I think I had accepted it also because I had thought like for 25 minutes that like I was also fired. So I think I like accepted it right away. Um, and then when I found out that it was just Ruby, I, I don't know, just my, that's my best friend, that's my sister. And she's in so much pain right now that it just hurt my heart. And I almost wish that um, I could like share it or take it from her or at least be like, dude, me too, it's okay, you know? Um, I don't know, I don't know. I don't want her to feel like I was better than her because I, I don't believe that, you know? So I just, I didn't know how to handle my best friend who I'm in a tag team with being let go and me still being here. Sort of like survivor's guilt in a way. Yeah, yeah, really bad, really bad survivor's guilt. I didn't know what to do. And then going to work that first week was so weird. I walk in with Ruby every single day. We walk around the halls together. We're together all the time. It was so weird. Um, but then, you know, everything just kept moving. And she's doing great. I'm so happy for her. Love you, Ru. Mm -hmm. um, she's doing great. And Sarah. Are you guys still close? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you hear from them the night you won? I would imagine. I did. I did. I did. They were so um, shocked. And I mean, they were like, of course you won Money in the Bank. But the fact that I cashed in on Rhonda and won, they were just were like, holy shit, dude. And I was just like, I know. I know. Like, I can't believe it either. All right, so SummerSlam on Saturday, big stadium show, very big deal. Ronda Rousey, you're the betting favorite, by the way. Am How about I? That? Yeah. I haven't looked at the betting odds. Yeah. Out. How about <laughs> that? You're the favorite. Love that for me. Um, <laughs> and I, I love that you say that. Um, what do you, like, if you can map out the next few months for you? Obviously. Beat Ronda Rousey yeah, we beat, at SummerSlam. That's the first thing, yeah. Um, uh, I haven't even, I, I have not thought that far ahead. I don't know. I mean, like, my goals as champion is like, I know it's corny, but I want to be a reigning defending champion. I want to wrestle whoever thinks that they're going to fight harder for this than I will. Um, I hope I get to make it at um, Clash of the Castle. You know, I'd love to go to Cardiff. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I don't think that far ahead. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Don't think and that especially now, I'm all about, you know, the present. So I haven't thought that far ahead. I just hope I get to just travel the world with my championship and just defend it. And I heard you say recently, um, obviously a lot of changes at the top of the company, but uh, you're a big fan of Triple H and Stephanie, yeah. and you feel like the vibe is very good, and I you're very optimistic about the future. I do. I think, I think everyone's optimistic. Um, I mean, I shouldn't speak for everyone, but um, it's very familiar. You know, it's not like two people that we don't know are in charge now. It's Triple H and Steph. You know, like we've they've been here all along, so it's like a very comforting feeling that it feels like, um, you know, mom and dad are still here, you know, I don't know. But I think that we're just kind of all ready to just put in the work and just take everything to the next level. It feels like kind of like a new era. 
It does feel like a new era. You're the champ. Uh-huh. That's a new era <laughs> in its own right. I can't believe I'm the champ during this crazy transition in WWE. How about I've that? I've been thinking about that, and I'm like, that's so insane to me. Like, even people that don't watch WWE that are looking into, you know, just because of news right. are, are seeing me as champion. I'm like, that's One of the so faces of the me. company. So insane to me. Headliner against it, Ronda Rousey. So Stadium show. Nashville, Tennessee. SummerSlam. 30-year anniversary of 1992 at Wembley Stadium. The wow. best one of all time. Hit me with all You know that? that? Bret Hart, Davy Boy Smith, facts. Dungeon. You're a product dungeon, of the new yes. Dungeon, right? <laughs> it could all come together. Saturday, Nissan Stadium, Nashville, Tennessee. The reigning <sighs> defending champion, Liv Morgan, defending her title against Ronda Rossi. We predicted it, by the way. I don't know if you saw that in the preview show. <laughs> we predicted it. We said it was going to happen. It did happen. And on Saturday, she will defend her title against Ronda Rossi. Best of luck Woo! to you. Thank you for the time. We appreciate it. Thank you.